Hello Live Wires, Heather Boyd Wire here. Today I'm going to make some wire wrapped rings inspired by the wire wrap pendants that I made with the 16 gauge wire. What you're going to need for this project is your wire. I have 16 gauge. You can also get away with 18 gauge. I have a couple of flat stones. I have my flat pliers, round pliers, cutters, and some larger round pliers. These are the looping pliers that I love to get the different round forms. You can also use the end of a pen. So I'm going to start with a 12 inch piece of 16 gauge wire. Just on the largest part of the looping pliers, I'm just going to bend this back like that. Now if you don't have looping pliers, you can use the end of a pen or a sharpie. That's not a problem at all. And then you can just take the end and we just want to curve the end just a little bit. Just a teeny little hint of a curve. And then we're going to place this one here and figure out where we have to bend these ends. So now we're going to take the pliers, take the three millimeter part and just bend this around a little bit on each side until we figure out exactly the position and then we can place it in here again to be sure. So that one looks pretty good. This one might have been bent a little bit too far. So we're going to bring this one around. Now bring it all the way around and this one too all the way around. This is actually a bead but I'm just going to use it as a flat stone. So we're going to stick this in here check how far this has to go over. This has gone over a little too far so you can remove it, push this out a little bit more and then just bend it in a little more. Just push it in a little more. This side too. Just push it in a little more. Sometimes it takes a little bit of wiggling. And then now we're going to stick it back in there and that seems pretty good. So we're just going to bring this like around like that. From there I'm actually going to bend one across the top like that and then this one across the bottom around there so it looks like that. This one's going to go around to form the ring there and then this one we want to just bend at a little bit of an angle there. So go in with your round pliers or these looping pliers. Just bend it on a bit of an angle. So put it back on the ring cone. Take this one, bring it around and this one too. So we're just going to take this one and bring it around. So that would be sort of the basic shape for the ring and then we could just bend it around here just to get it a little more even. And then from there we're going to want to cut these wires. So we want to cut it so it's going to sit underneath. So we're just going to give that a little clip, a flash cut, and this one to a little clip. And it would be helpful also to file those if you have a file so they won't scratch your finger. You could bring that one in that way, flip this, and then bring that one in that way so they finish underneath the stone and you can bring these a little more together if you like and you can always put it back on the ring mandrel and there you have your funky chunky ring with the glass cabochon. You can also do it with the 18 gauge wire. It's a little more fragile. So we're going to go ahead and take the seven millimeter size loop, bring this one around. Like I said, you can use the end of a pen or your round pliers as well. So that's the starting point. And then we're just going to figure out, this is an uneven stone. So let's try this one. We're going to just figure out how we could put it on this one here. It's a little slippy. But we want to also like bend the end a little bit. So let's just take this and bend it on a little bit of an angle. So it's going to hold a little bit and then put it back 
on the stone, whatever position you want. And you're going to have to just start it first to get an idea of the position. So if we're just going to start it around here and around here, if that looks good, then we're going to take these to help it out a little bit. This one too. It's always good to help out the wire with the pliers just so it won't get so distorted. So we're just going to bring it around here and if that's too thin we can always uh, make it wider. So now we'll put the stone back in there, hold it in place. It is a little slippy and then just bring that one around and then carefully bring it around this way. Make sure it's nicely placed in there and then take this one and bend it around here. So that would be the beginning part of the ring. If you have a step mandrel it's going to be easier. I'm just going to use a marker because it's an even cylinder and what I'll do is I'll just stick it on the marker. I'm just going to hold this here, give it a little bend and then I'm going to remove it from the marker and I want to bend it sort of around there. So I'm just going to take this wire and put it through those two loops here, hold it in place and then just loosely bring it back. And you can put it back on the mandrel and get your flat pliers and just close up that little loop there. And then I'm going to remove it and give it a little clip and you can close up that loop and then we're going to do the other side. So let's just put this back on the mandrel. So then we'll take this wire we want to go around and through there. So we're just going to give it a little bend so we know the approximate position there. Remove it and then take this wire between these two bands. So take this wire go between the two bands to here and then close up that little gap. So we'll just put it back on the ring mandrel and then so it won't get distorted we're going to keep it on there when we pull this one closed and that closes up the gap there. So now we can remove it again and just give that one a little clip. So the reason I'm doing this is because the 18 gauge is much more fragile and this way at least it'll hold its shape somewhat. So now we're going to just take that so these are pinched flush and that's pretty well the ring. Other than that you can push these ends in together. If you want you can wind these up with another wire to hold them in place. You could put it back on the mandrel just to get it nicely shaped. If you need to push those wires down a little bit you can. You can even give it a little tap with your rawhide mallet and then you remove it. And there you have your lovely stone ring with the wire just hugging the stone in place. So thanks so much for watching the video. Give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for lots more wire art and jewelry making videos. Hit the notification bell to be notified when I go live and when I post new videos. And if you'd like to share photos of your wire art and jewelry, be sure to join the Wire Makers Club on Facebook. And if you'd like to check out my work on Etsy, my husband and I specialize in custom wedding cake toppers and funky jewelry. I also have a mailing list, so if you'd like to sign up below, I'll send you my Wire Art Essentials ebook. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you the next time.